Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, so today I am going to be talking about um, something that's actually quite a rare condition uh, that I was actually, I suppose, privileged to see um, last year. I saw a client um, who was a young female lady, uh, no particular health issues, you know, did a sort of reasonable amount of exercise, but wasn't, you know, in the gym every day or anything like that. Um, and she came in with basically tension in the back. Um, and during the course of the massage, it became apparent, you know, that there was something a little different about her muscles. Um, she presented while I was working on the mid back, she presented with uh, a sort of a rippling of the muscles, which extended from the rhomboids, which are one of the deeper muscles up towards the upper back, right the way down to the pelvis. So um, at first it wasn't uh, really clear what was going on. Um, I'd not seen this before either as a massage therapist or as a nurse, um, but it was certainly clear that this wasn't, uh, you know, your usual muscle spasm. So after further examination um, and a little bit of research, it became clear that she had a very rare condition called rippling muscle disease. Now, wanted to do a post on this because there's really not a huge amount of information online about this. Um, it's not hardly any research has been done. Um, and even in terms of finding out like the incidence of this disease is difficult because it is so rare and there is such little information. And, you know, possibly there are quite a few people out there who don't even realise they have it. Certainly this client um, that I saw really, you know, had no idea that there was anything different going on. Um, you know, she didn't experience pain or anything like that. So, uh, so what is RMD? Um, well... Uh, it's certainly, we definitely know that it is a genetic condition, um, very rare, and it's non-progressive, so it's not going to get worse, you know, the longer you have it. It's known as uh, caviolinopathy, which, and it mainly affects the muscles. Um, as I say, there have been very few, you know, clinical trials, uh, you know, to give us more understanding of this condition. It's, we do know that it often happens um, or develops in either late childhood or early adolescence. And it is a rare autosomal dominant disorder, which is characterised by mechanically induced voluntary contractions of those skeletal muscles, which is what I saw when I was doing the massage. So what do we know about the causes of this disorder? Well, as I've said, we know it is a genetic disorder uh, and it's thought that mutations in the CAV3 gene, which um, you know, is found in the um, membranes of the muscle cells. It's thought that these mutations cause a shortage of the caviolin-3 protein, um, which is, you know, required for maintaining cell structure um, and also therefore within, you know, the muscle. This CAV3 protein also helps to uh, regulate calcium levels in the muscle cells um, and you know calcium we know is needed to control muscle contraction and relaxation so if you've then got a shortage of this 
CAV3 protein, you know, your calcium levels aren't going to be regulated so well. So that muscle contraction and relax relaxation isn't going to be controlled as well as, you know, in someone who doesn't have this shortage. Um, the CAV3 gene mutation may cause different uh, caviolinopathies within the same family. So things such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy um, or limb girdle muscular dystrophy. Um, these things have been potentially related. Um, Sometimes, as with a lot of conditions, you know, the cause of RMD is just unknown. We don't know why it happens. And, you know, it may not involve this CAV3 mutation. Um, in an acquired autoimmune form of RMD, um, this has been linked with uh, myasthenia gravis and muscular dystrophy um, and this does not again involve a genetic link or um, a positive CAV3 test. Now usually um, in terms of the genetics usually autosomal dominant inheritance which is where you have one mutated dominant gene um, in one of the non-sex chromosomes. So that is sort of the main sort of genetic uh, cause. Now, a parent who has a caviolinopathy has a 50% chance of having an affected child with one mutated gene. So that's quite a high, you know, um, quite a high, you know, risk. Um, with autosomal recessive inheritance, um, so this is where both parents would carry a recessive gene um, that is mutated. Um, they don't have any symptoms, but they're just a carrier. And so then obviously if two carriers get together and have a child, these two recessive genes can then come together and become a dominant trait in the child. Um, and this can generally result in, you know, more severe symptoms in that child um, than those with, you know, the autosomal dominant form, which is where you just have the one parent with a mutated dominant gene. So hopefully I've not confused you too much there. Um, so a few different, um, you know, causes um, th that, you know, we believe cause, uh, cause RMD. So in terms of the symptoms, um, you know, we know that RMD mainly affects the muscles near the center of the body, um, particularly around the thigh area. Um, but also, you know, the common areas are across the chest, across those pectoral muscles um, and, you know, obviously around sort of the mid lower back is quite common as well. Now, um, as I say, there's not a huge amount online, but um, you can see here on this picture, you can see some of the rippling there down the muscle. Um, and there are um, a few videos actually on uh, on YouTube where you can actually see, um, you know, the rippling. It's literally like as if you, you know, threw a pebble in the water and you get that rippling um, and it, you know, just works its way down the muscle. Um, so, yes, and so it affects mainly the, those sort of more central um, muscles on the body uh, and it's basically the muscles become oversensitive to either movement or pressure and so obviously that's why when I was doing the massage and stretching that muscle 
you know, this results in a visible rippling across that muscle. Um, and, and again, you know, with exercise, is also you know again you're going to have that stretching of the muscles and so you're likely to see it happen then um and this rippling will last somewhere between around five and 20 seconds um you'll find that there will be increased muscle irritability um when there is either a sudden impact maybe through exercise or stretching of the muscle as you would get in a massage um, and this you know causes percussion induced you know muscle mounding sometimes which is where that muscle will really kind of bunch up um, or um, you can get percussion induced rapid contraction which is where the muscle will uh, exhibit repetitive tensing lasting sometimes up to about 30 seconds and with this you can get pain um, but it doesn't always happen um, you may see hypertrophy of the muscles so um, you know sort of excessive growth um, and this particularly can happen in the calf muscle uh, you may see an abnormal gait or walking pattern, so something like walking on tiptoe, uh, fatigue, um, cramps, muscle stiffness, especially following exercise or in cold temperatures, this may be particularly apparent. So how do we treat this? Uh, you know, if we know that we have it, how can we treat it? Well, short answer, you can't really. Um, you're not going to get rid of it. Uh, there's no specific treatment um, other than just trying to manage those symptoms. So in terms of management, this may include, you know, controlling your weight to avoid obesity. Um, you know, physical therapy, massage and stretching exercises just to help improve the mobility and reduce any contractures within the muscle. Um, mechanical aids, if you have, you know, an altered walking pattern, so canes, orthotics, just things to assist with your mobility. Um, Potentially social and emotional support to improve your productivity and, and just reduce isolation if, if it affects you in that way. Um, some cases have shown that, uh, you know, a muscle relaxant called dantrolene um, and also calcium channel uh, antagonists can be beneficial. Um, you know, as we've said, um, you know, mutation of and, and shortage of that uh, CAV3 protein can affect um, the calcium supply to the muscle tissue. Um, and in acquired autoimmune RMD, um, potentially some kind of immunosuppressive therapy may benefit. Um, but, you know, you really need to seek um, sort of medical advice on that. Um, but as I say, you know, in, in the majority of people, a lot of people don't even know they have it. And the majority of people, you know, don't get pain or any symptoms that really bother. Um, it, it is purely just that rippling in the muscle that, um, you know, that, that is, is sort of demonstrated. So in terms of prognosis, as we said, RMD is a non-progressive condition with relatively mild symptoms. It can in some cases be painful, but in a lot of cases there is no pain. Um, symptoms can be particularly bad in autosomal recessive RMD, i.e. those that have two gene mutations, one from each parent. Um, but those with any features of caviolinopathies, um, you know, other caviolinopathies aside from the RMD, 
Again, the symptoms may be more severe in these cases, um, but generally there's no documented effect on life expectancy and most people just get on with their lives, no problem. So, so hopefully um, that has given you a little bit more information about this condition. Um, and um, yeah, there's not much more I can tell you on it really. As I say, there's not a huge amount of information out there, but, uh, but if you want to see more of my videos on um, particularly sports type injuries and muscle tissue disorders, um, do subscribe to my channel. You'll be informed when further videos come out. You can comment down below or contact me through my Facebook or Instagram and I will do my best to answer any questions you might have. But for now, that is all from me. So I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.